As we develop our homestead, we obviously focus a lot of our attention on food, but there are lots of incredibly productive and useful plants that we can incorporate into our landscape that are going to provide us with things like toiletries or cleaning supplies and everything in between. So today we're going to be going over 10 different plants that you can plant into your homestead that are going to be useful for things other than food. The first plant I wanted to start with is rosemary because you're probably already growing it. Now obviously we can use this for cooking, culinary uses, but I wanted to point out that rosemary is an excellent disinfectant. I make a cleaning spray using vinegar and a snip or piece of rosemary. If you let that sit and distill in the vinegar for a few weeks, rosemary extract is an antifungal and an antibacterial. So it just increases the cleaning abilities of the vinegar to use on surfaces like your countertops or your sink or even your bathtub. This plant is Hopi Red Dye Amaranth and it is a great multi-use plant. You can eat the leaves as a salad alternative in the hot summer months, but you can also use it as a food dye. You may or may not be aware, but red food dye that is in a ton of our food is really pretty terrible for us. It causes all sorts of mental and physical health issues, asthma, ADHD, all sorts of pretty horrid stuff. It's even banned in the European Union and Australia, yet still commonly used as a food dye here in the United States. This plant can be used as a natural red food dye. It is traditionally used by the Hopi people for a ceremonial piki bread that they make um, for cultural celebrations, but it can be used for any food dye, whether you're dyeing Easter eggs, or perhaps uh, the frosting on a strawberry cake to make it more vibrant and bright. You can use the flowers steeped in water as an alternative to any commercial red food dye. Ashwapui or shampoo ginger is a super fun addition to anybody's landscape. And it is shampoo ginger because it can be a shampoo replacement or alternative. The plant is incredibly moisturizing and helps to rehydrate strands. It's got like 19 amino acids and all sorts of stuff that helps our hair stay healthy. You can use it as a pre-rinse where you apply it to your hair, let it sit 10, 15 minutes, and then follow with your normal shampoo. Or you can use it as a literal replacement of shampoo. Wash it in, rinse it out, and your hair will be so soft and shiny, you will be loving life. So to harvest the shampoo, you wait for the blooms to form. And once the bloom forms and turns nice bright red, you simply take a jar or other vessel and squeeze the plant and out will come a very clear juice. That juice is what you use as your shampoo. So with these blooms, you can actually harvest them every couple of days. I just harvested maybe two or three days ago. Um, but throughout the entire growing season, you can just continue to gently squeeze each of those blooms and they will produce more and more liquid for you. Now they are gonna want the warmer months. So if you want to and have a large enough patch, you can potentially always freeze the juice to be able to use throughout the year. Plants need food, particularly nitrogen, which is really quickly depleted for most soils. Now we can think of an entire group of plants, legumes, which naturally create nitrogen. They are able to take it from the air and put it into the soil for us without needing inputs from us. So we typically relegate that just to beans or peas that we might plant as an annual in our vegetable gardens. But there are a lot of perennial legumes that we can plant into our homestead and food forest to have year round consistent sources of nitrogen for our plants. I'm sitting on a lawn of perennial peanut and sunshine mimosa. Both of them are nitrogen fixers, which means they are feeding all of the plants that are growing in and around it. My fruit trees are getting small doses of nitrogen on a consistent basis without me having to do a thing. There's also things like pigeon pea, which we could use for chop and drop, or butterfly pea. There are so many options of nitrogen fixing perennials that we can incorporate into the landscape for a constant source of fertilizer. Soap nut 
or Florida soap berry is used for laundry soap. The nuts that this tree, um, small tree, produces are dried and used as a laundry soap alternative. The nuts are really high in saponin, which is what is commonly used in most soaps for the cleaning agent. So this can be laundry soap. You put it into a mesh bag, some of the nuts, throw it into the laundry. They can actually be used for multiple washes before you have to change them out. Um, but they can also be used for anything, hand soap, pet wash, whatever you'd like to use these for. Soap nut is actually a native plant here in Florida and grows fantastic in South and Central Florida. If you haven't checked it out yet, I do have a plant shop on my website. I carry a huge collection of curated seeds, all for growing food here in Florida. And we also have really unique alternative permaculture, Florida food forest type plants like soap berry and most of the plants that we are going to be talking about today. If you haven't checked it out yet, make sure to head to theurbanharvest.com and go to plant shop. Moringa is known as the tree of life and it is absolutely amazingly nutrient dense. Most people use the leaves and overlook the fact that Moringa can purify water. The dried seed pods that you get can be crushed and put into raw water. So maybe think hurricane prep or something, um, but you can grind these seeds, put it into water and the elements in the seed actually effectively remove bacteria and sediments from the water. So this can act as a rudimentary water purification system and is used widely in other countries where clean drinking water is a major issue. These can be pre-made into little tea bags. You can put them into a strainer or other filtering device, but this is definitely a top homesteading plant. Next, I wanted to highlight plant medicine. I remember I was talking to a friend of mine who was interested in starting a homestead and growing some of her own food and I started mentioning things like elderberry and echinacea and she was like, wait, we can grow medicine? It's really easy in today's modern society to forget that most of our medicines come from plants, at least in their original form. And ginger is a great example of that. It is incredibly effective at soothing digestive issues. So think of diarrhea, uh, gas, bloating, cramping for women. Um, it helps with any sort of digestive issues. So you can steep the raw root sliced thinly in tea for five to 10 minutes and sip on that. And it will within minutes, generally speaking, help soothe your symptoms. Some people will also use this as a daily morning tonic with a little bit of cayenne as a way to kickstart the digestion for the day. So ginger and all sorts of plants can also be used for medicine, not just for food. Goodbye roaches, weevils, and silverfish. This is bay leaf and it is a very effective insect repellent. It disrupts their sensory receptors and encourages them to leave the area. Now this is completely non-toxic. Obviously we can add this to our cooking and all sorts of other things. So um, to have this around the house with pets or kids is no problem, uh, no safety issue there. So all you have to do is take the dry or fresh leaves and tuck them around the house wherever they may be frequenting or hiding. So think of the back of your silverware drawer, the pantry, behind furniture, under cabinets or refrigerators. Tuck these leaves anywhere and everywhere and freshen up every once in a while and you will have a very effective insect repellent. Now just to note, this in no way kills them. It is not toxic. So this is not going to be, um, you know, killing off a population that may be in or around the house. It is simply going to encourage them to leave the area. A pest repellent can also be homegrown. So I like to use the super spicy hot peppers that generally we can consume a small amount of, but end up having boatloads of, and garlic. I'll take those two items and rough chop them and put them into some boiling water. 
Now make sure your exhaust fan is on or potentially do it on like the burner of your grill. Um, the oils can be um, a lot and sensitive uh, for your eyes, but you boil it uh, until the oils are extracted and then you just let it steep or sit. I usually will let it sit overnight or for around 24 hours. After that, you just strain out the solids, put it into a spray bottle and put a few drops of dish soap. The dish soap helps the oils from those plants to adhere to the plants you're spraying. Then you can cover any and all plants that you'd like that are getting eaten up by pests. Now this is a deterrent. It is not a pesticide, so it is not going to be killing those insects, but it does make it incredibly unappetizing to them. So you know those bath sponges that you can pay $10, $15 for at Bed Bath & Beyond or other stores? You can grow them. They're not from the ocean. They're actually from a plant. A gourd. This is loofa gourd and these sponges are obviously incredibly useful to have around the house. A lot of people will use them for bathing, put a stick on it or a string and use it to scrub and exfoliate their body. It's great for that. But a lot of people will overlook the fact that these also make really good cleaning sponges. I use this to wash my dishes. It doesn't scratch nonstick surfaces. You can use it for cleaning the bathtub, even washing the car. The brittle but not so scratchy surface is not going to be abrasive enough to cause any damage, um, but is just rough enough to get the job done. This plant grows in the summer, but uh, it is harvested from the dry brown gourds and it stores really well. So you can easily grow your year's supply worth of sponges for bath or cleaning and store them in a pantry or some other space in your homestead so that you have a year's supply ready to go. And because permaculture is my life, multi-use is important. This guy actually is a food crop as well. If you wanna learn more about how to grow loofah and what else you can do with it, make sure to check out this video next.